Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how we can use multi-platform arcade game designer to load um, an old game um, written with AGD uh, and make some changes to it, make some improvements. So um, we'll do that right now. As you can see, I'll just show you the version that we're using here. Um, it's 0.7.8. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to import a game. Now we can import a game from tape or from snapshot. It will take 48k and 1 to 8k snapshots. Um, but we're going to import from tape. Now this doesn't always work. Um, it depends on the, the tape file um, and how that's been organised. Um, but here's one I know that does work. Blimp Geddon by Ultra Narble. So we can import that. Uh, and now we have um, Blimp Geddon. Um, imported. So there you can see the code for sprite type 1 extracted from the AGD game. Uh, we can see all the um, screens um, and how they're laid out. So what we'll do is we'll first of all we'll build that and run it. So this is a spectrum emulator. It fires up when we press F5 and we can test the game. So you can see this is the game running. Now, the thing I'm going to show you um, today is how we can change these particles. Now, as you can see, the author has used the uh, vapor trail um, effect uh, for the underwater screens. Um, but I think it would look a little bit better if we had bubbles, because bubbles go up the screen, don't they? They go to the top of the water. They, they don't just um, sit around in the water. Um, so. What we'll do is we'll put some um, code in for some new particles. So the way we do that is we go to the event where the player is moved and if we move down, now here we see the bit of code where the trail is generated. What I'm going to do is create Some particles of my own instead. So we take out the trail, we get, get random 5, and if random is 0, so there's a 1 in 5 chance, um, we create a new particle, um, we have to give it an argument um, for the, the lifespan of the particle, but we're not going to um, decay the particle, so it, it will stay on screen until it moves off, uh, off the, the top of the screen. So that's all we need to do there in, in place of the trail. That will generate a new particle every at random every five frames on average. So if we save that, next we need to find an unused event. Now, AGD didn't have collectible blocks, so let's put the code in the collect blocks event. And we're going to... Um, define a user particle here. So we'll use define particle um, and it's particle up, particle up, so that will move it up uh, each frame uh, and then we'll get another random number and we'll use four uh, and if we get a random value of one We move the particle left and if we have a random value of 2 we move the particle right. Okay so now you see what we're doing here. We've uh, got our um, particle um, defined in the code. It moves the particle up a few pixels, we get a random number um, from 0 to 3, uh, and we have a 25% chance of moving it left each frame and a 25% chance of moving it right, otherwise it just doesn't move left or right. So that's a, just a, a simple little um, bubble effect. So let's see what our game looks like when we, build, when we run that. So let's press F5 again. It's 
Brings up Blimpgeddon again without changing. And there we see the bubble effect in action. Now I could always generate uh, more bubbles um, by amending the um, the code in, in the, the player sprite events, but um, there, that's just a very simple example of, of how we can make a change to an existing AGD game in MPAGD using the extra features that MPAGD has.